Welcome guys to Buffalo Sports Talk. I am your host Matt and well the guest Brad is here. He's normally the cameraman but uh we're deciding to do something a little bit different by not showing camera because you know it might be a little bit hard because our phones keep crapping out with the camera because it takes too long so we're just going to do this and we're going to try to keep this nice and short. So uh, you want to say hi Brad? Hi. That was kind of weird. Yeah. <clears throat> So, um, yesterday's game, we're just going to go over this real quick. I predicted the Vancouver Canucks to win 5-3, to three, but, um, or no, I predicted Senators to win 5-3, to three, and the uh, Canucks won 7-1. to one. Suter gets his first career hat trick, and he leads the Canucks to victory. And for tonight's game, Pittsburgh takes on Boston in Boston for the first time this year, the first of eight matchups between these two, and this one starts at 7 o'clock Eastern time. The Bruins are 3-1-1, one, and, one, and the Penguins are 4-2-0 and oh on the season. I predict the Bruins to win 3-2 to two in an overtime and Brad, you tell him your pick. Um, I'm thinking Pittsburgh four to two. All right, and the Buffalo Sabers host the New York Rangers today, and uh, I'll let I'll let Brad take this one. Yeah, we haven't been looking too good this season, but I have a feeling we're gonna do like pretty well this game tonight. So first of eight between these two, Rangers don't have Lundqvist because he was traded in the off season to the Capitals. Mm-hmm. Um. But the problem is, Sabres have only beaten the Rangers 11 times in the past 10 years. So, they have a pretty good record on us. Um, we did win the last matchup, though, 3-2. to two, And since then, we've gained a lot of offensive firepower, being Taylor Hall and Eric Stahl. And there's no reason at all we should lose this game. Yeah, I'm taking Sabres 5-2. to two. Um, I'm saying Sabres like a complete blowout like the Vancouver game mm-hmm. 7-1 nice and um Philadelphia Flyers are traveling to New Jersey for the night to take on the Devils Devils are looking sharp this season uh, a 3-1-1 record seven points in only five games Jack Hughes is a major reason why they're doing good this season Hughes has seven points in five games so he has the same amount of points in games that the Devils have in a whole um, three goals, four assists, and uh, if he keeps this up, and Mackenzie Blackwood stays sharp in net, I see the Devils winning this game. But much like how the Flyers shut down the Sabres offense, I would not be surprised if the Flyers' defense can also shut down Hughes and the Devils and end up taking this game. So um, I think Devils win this one 4-1, to one, and uh, what would you think? Um, I'm going to go Devils 3-1. to one. All right, and... Uh, New York Islanders take on Washington Capitals in the nation's capital, and I'll let Bradley take this one, too. Um, so, here we go. All right. The Islanders taking on the Capitals in Washington. Uh, Washington is currently leading the Eastern Division with 3-0-3, beating the Sabres all three of those times. Um, they may have beat the Sabres, but the Islanders are really no joke this season. Seaman Varmalov emerging as one of the league's best and with Ovechkin do, out to do to COVID, mm-hmm. that's going to be a major part this season is COVID. And their best offensive player is out due to it. I think we can look at, at the end of the season, I think we're going to be able to look at the player list and I have a feeling a lot of them are going to be out due to COVID. Yeah, and this might change teams like entire season. Like they could lose one game because their players out to COVID, and it could just change their entire game. So, um, yeah, I don't think they could really stop this guy's monster goaltending season right now. He posted back to back shutouts in his first two games of the season, unless T.J. Oshie and Nicholas Backstrom can step up and rip the bisky between the pipes. Because if they could do that, I think Capitals have a good chance of winning this. But um. I'm going with the Islanders, handing them their first regulation loss this season. I'm taking Islanders um, 4-3. 4-3. Yeah, I'd say it's going to be close like that, too. I'm thinking 4-3, too. Islanders. Islanders? All right. <clears throat> Florida Panthers are going up to Columbus, Ohio, to take on the Blue Jackets, the last of the 7 o'clock Eastern games. Florida entering the game tonight with an undefeated record of 2-0-0. They missed a few games because of COVID. They're... Most of the team had COVID, so they couldn't really play. But otherwise, they're looking pretty good. The Jackets are tied with the Lightning at six points with a 2-2-2 two, two, two record. The Panthers will look to keep the streak alive with the win over the Jackets and 
And, you know, they have Bobrovsky. They're, he's an ex-Jack and used to play goalie for them. Looking to defeat his old club with the help of his new one. Patrick Laine will not be playing today because, you know, COVID issue. So he cannot officially play until one more week. So they got to keep him out. But, um, yeah, that's what happens with quarantine trades. I'm taking... I'm honestly taking... Hmm, I think I'm going to take Florida winning this one. All right, now here's one nothing. Think. I'm taking Florida one nothing. I'm gonna take Columbus mm-hmm. on this one. I'm, I think it's gonna be two nothing. Two nothing. All right. You know that doesn't make sense because Columbus does have a pretty good goalie. Um. So yeah, Nashville takes on Chicago. Nashville is hosting their rival Chicago at eight o'clock Eastern, kicking off the eight o'clock games. And Brent Seabrook and Jonathan Taves are out due to injury. Malcolm Subban, one of my favorite goaltenders. Looks like he'll be getting the start tonight in as goaltending. As for the Predators, it looks like Pecorine will be handed the start tonight. The Blackhawks' power play might be the most dangerous in the league as of now. If the Preds want to walk out of their building with a W, the key is to not take any penalties. And I'm saying Predators will take at least three penalties and the Blackhawks will score on two of those leading the Blackhawks to a 3-2 to two victory over the National Predators. Mm-hmm. So uh, what's, your, what's your prediction for this game, Brad? I really have no clue how this is going to go. If I'm just being honest with you, I think it could go either way. So, um, <clears throat> I mean... You could make them tie, as in, like, it goes to a shootout or an overtime so that no one really loses, but there has to be a winner in the end. So yeah. You're thinking that this is going to end in, like, an overtime shootout type thing? Yeah. I think it's going to stay maybe 1-1, 2-2 maybe mm-hmm. for a little bit. It's going to go into overtime. Shootout. I think... I really have no idea who's going to win. Uh, okay, let's just take a guess. If I had completely random guess, Chicago. All right. Um, <clears throat> so the Winnipeg Jets are hosting the Edmonton Oilers tonight, and I will let you take this one. Yeah, so we got Winnipeg in... No. The Oilers are in Winnipeg today. So... I mean, yeah, if Winnipeg wants to win any games, this is the one they want to win. Mm -hmm. With an injured Mike Smith and a backup goalie in net for the Oilers, it looks like the Jets have an easy win, but if they want to win, they're going to have to capitalize on the opportunities and not take any chances. The Oilers team will eat you up offensively if you make any mistakes due to the power line of McDavid Hopkins and Paul Jujarvi. Yeah, and... Edmonton won this last one. They yeah. won the last matchup between these teams 4-3 to three this season. So it was pretty good. And um, my prediction is Winnipeg wins this one 4-3. to three. Yeah, I'm thinking Winnipeg's going to take advantage of the injuries and the backup. I think they're going to win 4-3 too. Mm-hmm. Minnesota Wild hosting the Los Angeles Kings tonight at 8 o'clock, being the third and final 8 o'clock game. The top there at Kopitar, I the follow, and Kempe will be a challenge for Minnesota Wild if their defense cannot contain them. But I wouldn't worry since the last meeting between these teams that ended in a victory for Minnesota, 4-3 to in overtime. Since then, Kopitar has emerged as one of the best playmakers in the league as of right now, scoring one goal and a whopping nine assists. Now, I wouldn't worry just yet if I were a Wild fan because you have a goaltender with the name Kapo Kakinen. One of the best young goaltenders in the NHL. This game will take more than 60 to decide. I'm saying it's going to an OT. Kings will emerge v- the victors of this game. 3-2. to two. Do you have no clues going to win this yeah, one? As well? I, yeah. <clears throat> J- just say wild, I guess. 3-2. to two, Okay, overtime. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that one. So, so then we have two different predictions there. All right. The Dallas Stars are... Her. They're hosting the Red Wings tonight at 8.30. Now, this I don't count this as an 8 o'clock on the dot game because it, it starts at 8.30. It's the only 8.30 game of the night. And um, the Red Wings look somewhat good, but they're still not as good as I think they could be. 
both clubs have two wins. The only difference is the Stars played two games. While the Red Wings played six, going 2-4-0 in that six-game stretch. And um, I have faith in Detroit's offense, not so much on their goaltending and defense. Hence them being under nine, differ- or minus eight differential, while the Stars are plus eight. Meaning that Detroit has allowed eight more goals than they've scored, and Stars have scored eight more than they've let in. And um, I have a gut feeling that Red Wings won't win tonight, but if they do, I won't be surprised. Here is why. If you have an offensive firepower in Dylan Larkin and Tyler Bertuzzi, I wouldn't be scared. I, w- I wouldn't be scared of much as long as those guys can get pucks past Ben Bishop, the Stars goaltender. And um, I'm taking I'm taking Dallas uh, six to uh, six two six to two. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Stars on this one. I'm thinking 4-3. to 4-3, three. Three. all right. Overtime or shoot or anything, just nope. regulation? All right, yep. They're going to hold it out. And um, St. Louis Blues are going to the Sin City, looking to deal the Knights their second loss of the season. The 56-game season, that is. And uh, St. Louis hasn't gotten off to the start that we expected, but it isn't something we shouldn't worry about being three, two, and one with seven points. You know that it isn't all that bad considering the Tampa Bay Lightning actually started off last in the division last year, and they went on to go win the Stanley Cup. And the Blues actually did that before too. They were the worst in the league entering January. They won the Cup that year because they barely lost any games from January to April, the beginning of April. That is like the first week because there's not much in April. But um. Actually, their power plays are the things I worry the most. Blue's power play is terrible, scoring 5.6% of the time. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty bad. And um, actually, they're only, th- they're only ranked 30th out of 31, so somebody has a worse power play than that, which is just mind-boggling. Vegas is 10%, and they're actually ranked 26th, so it's kind of surprises, uh, surprises me. However, uh, Vegas averages three goals a game while uh, only allowing three goals a game. Well, they they average 3.17, so they can't be that even. The Blues average 2.83 goals a game while allowing 3.67. That's something I would worry about. I would figure Jordan Bennington would be better for the Blues, but um, maybe maybe he's not. And, um, yeah, honestly, I, I, I expect Knights to win this one. Um, it's gonna be a close one. I'm, I'm taking Knights, uh, 2 nothing. By close, I mean, like, you know, Knights have looked good all night, but so have the Blues, but the Blues just couldn't get anything past Robin Leonard. So it's close, because it's not like a blowout, but it's not. Yeah. So what's your prediction on this game? Uh, I'm gonna go with the Knights also, but I don't think it's gonna be close. I think it's gonna be, like, 5-1 five, five maybe. Maybe five nothing. Shut out. That's reasonable because honestly, if this Blues team cannot get it going on offense, they're gonna have a really tough time. Um, Toronto is going to Calgary for their the first game of nine o'clock, or actually no, the second nine o'clock game. My bad, I forgot to say. St. Louis and Golden Knights are the first nine o'clock game this season. Toronto with a five two and zero record, which surprises me because they're looking really good, are taking on the two one and one Flames. The Leafs definitely have the advantage. Uh, they have the advantage in this one with a really great goalie and a really great offensive talent. I don't have anything else to say this one, but the Leafs will win this one. Sorry, Calgary fans, but Toronto is just too damn good. Toronto's gonna win this one. I think. Um, what f- five nothing? Five nothing because dude, this Toronto team is looking pretty badass right now. I'm liking this Toronto team. Uh, what's your prediction for this one? Um, yeah, I'm thinking of Toronto, um, but I think it's gonna be. Uh, I think it's gonna be like, I don't know, three two maybe. It's a bit closer than my prediction. Yeah. All right. Um. And you get to do the Sharks, my friend. All right, so Sharks are heading all the way out to Colorado this game. They're power walking their way to Colorado. Yeah, they're power walking all the way up to Colorado. How far is that? It's 
a long power San Jose walk. to Colorado. That's not that far. Yeah, it is. California like to Denver. Denver's like middle of the country, so California's like, well, yeah, I guess for a walk it is, but a drive that's maybe like 10 hours, 12 hours tops. Yeah. Not well, okay, either way, they're heading up to Colorado. Both teams are 3 3 0, so this should be an interesting one. I'm going to give the edge to the Sharks this game, only like just purely because they don't have any in- injuries or any illnesses. I'm saying Sharks are going to win 2-1 overtime shootout. It's honestly like a 51% chance that the Sharks will win and a 49% chance the Avalanche will win. I'm not going to give it 50-50 because i got to give an edge to one team. I can't be like, oh, this is a 50-50 game. One team has to win, overtime or not. I'm saying Sharks 3-2 to two in overtime. And, uh, you know, let's, let's go even further. Brent Burns is going to get this game-winning goal. I'm calling it. He's going to get the game-winning goal. But, um, yeah, and would you like to do the final game of the night, the Coyotes-Ducks? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. So we got the Ducks at the Coyotes. They're flying their way to the desert. You know, flying should at least, like, that's relatively short. Because, I mean, you could fly from California to New York. Yeah, but du- Ducks fly. Like, yeah, Ducks I know. flap their wings and yes, get up I know. in the air. But, like, that's flying, the comedy. That's the comedy yes, of that. Yes, I know. But, like, that would be a way shorter distance either way. Whether you're in an industrial sized plane or you're flapping your wings like a duck, it should be shorter. <laughs> well, honestly, the ducks might not be flapping their wings after this game because, uh, you know, I'll let you. I'll let you actually read off the thing. Um, but yeah, you know, it would make more sense if the sharks were taking on the uh, coyotes and the ducks were taking on the avalanche because then our word play would make more sense there. Yeah. They should change the entire schedule just so that our wordplay makes more sense. We'll eventually get it. Yeah. It'll be, like, just the perfect matchup at some point. Yeah. All right, well, uh, Coyotes are not having a very good start to the season. So. I mean, especially making the playoffs last year, going 2-3-1 and one with only five points. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, you guys were a playoff team last year. You were looking pretty good. But that's just kind of unacceptable for a team that made the playoffs. But come on. I mean, kick up those engines. Yeah, and then the Ducks are looking better than they expected, being 2-2-2 two, two, and two, with only six points. Um, I can't tell you which team is going to have the edge since Coyotes got a really good offense. They can score if they're on top of the game. But shooting on Anaheim an elite goalie and John Gibson see Ducks look like the better team when they're heading into this game but I wouldn't be surprised if Coyotes win this just considering that they have a very good offense as I said before if they can put up enough points you can always win oh yeah so I mean, you know, I'm gonna take the Ducks in this game, uh, for four to two. I think Gibson's gonna be able to do really good. You know, what, what's your prediction for this one? Um, I'm thinking it's gonna be real close with this one. I think there's gonna be a lot of scoring on both sides, but like I said before, if you can put up enough points, you're gonna win. So I'm saying Coyotes are gonna win overtime shootout. Five four. Five four. Nice. Alright. The man, the myth, the legend wasn't able to make it today, but um he was able to leave us his picks of the night. So uh here's Jakey's pick. Penguins win three to one over the Bruins. New York Rangers beat the Sabres two to one. The Flyers beat um the Devils three to two. The Capitals beat the Islanders four to one. Columbus beats the Panthers 3 to 2, Nashville beats the uh, Chicago Blackhawks 5 to 2, Stars beat um the Red Wings 4 to 2, Avalanche beat the Sharks 3 to 2, Leafs win 5 to 1 over the Calgary Flames, Edmonton wins 2 to 1 over the Jets, Wild win 5 to 4 over the Kings and the Ducks win 2 to 1 over the Coyotes. And um <clears throat> you know, thanks for listening to this if you made it through the entire thing. 
If you like this, you could subscribe and hit it a like. If you didn't, then you could dislike the video and never watch us again. We're just happy to be making this, so we don't really care what you guys do. But um, don't don't forget, let's go Buffalo.